Solomon Speed Cross Fives on the feet. Final review coming tonight. So excited to talk to you guys about these shoes. Oh man, cruising at Deer Creek right now. Mud, snow, a little bit of ice, but not too much. Mostly just mud and snow. All right, let's do this. have it there you have it full review of hold on the Solomon speed cross five back at the shed here we go here we go my full review of the Solomon speed cross five I'm just pulling up Strava just to make sure I got 50 miles in the shoe I believe I did after today's run let's see here Solomon speed cross five 54 miles. So I always like to go past 50 miles before I give my full review and thoughts. And yeah, so we did it. We passed 50 miles today, did nine miles today through the snow and mud and oh, it was glorious up there. Okay, where to begin with discussing this shoe? So as many of you know, I do have the Speed Cross 4. I will be doing a comparison, another comparison video comparing the differences between these two shoes. Stay tuned for that. That'll be coming probably in the next three or four days. Uh, but let's talk about this guy. Where do we begin? Okay, 10 millimeter drop, 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe. Uh, so that's pretty high. That's a pretty high drop. But usually I don't like that type of drop. Like that's pretty, that's a little too high for me. Uh, but for this type of shoe where you're running uphill a ton, having a little higher uh, drop allows you, it basically alleviates some of the torque that you're putting on your Achilles tendon as you're pushing yourself up the hill, up the mountain. And that was the case today. I could feel it today because the stack height of, of the heel is just a little higher than most shoes out there. It is a heavy shoe. It is a heavy shoe. My version size eight is 11.3 ounces. So basically 320 grams. So it's heavy and that's okay. That's okay. It's not a racing shoe, although I might use it for the uh, vertical K race in Aspen going up the snow, but it is, you know, it's just a good solid training shoe. And guess what? I prefer a little bit of weight in my training shoes because when you put on a really, really lightweight racing shoe, you just, it's a, it's a little bit of a mental game, but you just feel so much faster. And as far as the price goes, $130 is what I paid. However, and I don't, I actually don't understand how they're able to price point this shoe at 130 because I feel like it's really well constructed. There's a lot of material. That's why it weighs 11.3 ounces. There's a lot of material in this shoe. And so I'm just trying to figure out how Solomon is able to pull off that price point. But thank you, Solomon, for keeping it pretty reasonable, especially compared to some of your other shoes. Um, but also 
campsaver.com. I found $109 for the shoe, but the sizes are a little limited. So if you're really interested in getting into rocky or muddy trail running in 2019, you might want to look at this shoe moving forward because I think the price point is pretty spot on. I really do. I really do. Okay. And let's move on to the upper of the Solomon Speed Cross 5. It's a lot more supple, meaning soft, uh, flexible, malleable compared to the Solomon Speed Cross 4. It's a different material that's a little lighter and I noticed it immediately pulling it out of the box that it, it just, the uh, the upper, I, and I actually, I'm just gonna say it now, that is the, the greatest or the best advancement forward from last year's Speed Cross 4. The upper is a lot more enjoyable to lace up and just to run in. Like it doesn't feel as stiff as the Speed Cross 4. Uh, so anyway, kudos to Solomon for the advancement in the upper. But I will just say that I don't know if it's quite as waterproof as last year's iteration. I did feel some water splashing into my toe box today, just a teeny tiny bit. It really didn't bother me at all, but I could feel just a little bit of water coming in through the toe box. Again, look at the conditions I was in. It was very muddy, slushy, wet. Um, so not a huge deal. I don't mind it. Uh, yeah, but anyway, keep that in mind. If you're looking at running in really, really, really wet conditions, uh, you might want to look at a shoe that's even more Gore-Tex than this one. Through the midsole, it's an injected EVA midsole. And again, the biggest kind of noticeable difference just looking at the shoe is that the heel is a lot more built up uh, compared to last year. And I think they did that. I don't know exactly, but my theory is that they did this to protect your heel when you're, I think, when you're bombing down mountains and it's really rocky. And so you just, like in this shoe, I would feel so comfortable literally like just bombing down a mountain. Uh, first of all, the grip on the outsole is off the off the charts, but because of this he, this built up heel and this protection with this extra uh, EVA midsole around the heel, it's like amazing. Like I would feel totally confident just bombing down a 14er in this shoe. So anyway, that's through the midsole. And then on the outsole, oh my goodness, holy guacamole, okay. The outsole is a Contra Grip rubber. That's what they call it, a Contra Grip rubber. Uh, the lugs are a little wider than last year's, so that's good. A little more lug action. They're a little wider as far as the pattern of the lugs on the bottom. Uh, there is a rock plate in this uh, outsole, slight, like right below the midsole lead, leading into the outsole. So if you're stepping on like pokey, sharp rocks on the trails, like, like I've done it a little bit already, but not too much because I'm mostly running in snow right now, but I have done it just a teeny tiny bit and the rock plate was awesome. Like I didn't feel any pain of rocks poking up into the bottom of my foot. Uh, oh yeah. And then lastly, they did through the outsole, they did, they did widen the uh, platform or the landing area of the toe box. Again, they widened it from last year. So just adding a little bit more stability. And I don't know, I kind of like how Solomon keeps their shoes a little bit more narrow, uh, especially when you're negotiating really rocky terrain and you're kind of dancing over the rock. So anyway, I don't know if that was quite necessary, but if you do feel a little unstable when running on trails, this is a good step in the right direction for you. The fact that they widen the toe box platform landing area. And what is the score for this Solomon Speedcross 5? Eight and a half out of ten. Eight and a half out of ten. Oh, that's a good score in my book. Really good score. Eight and a half out of ten. I just, I love it. I love the shoe. I love the shoe. And would I buy this shoe again? Absolutely. Uh, and I would, I would pay a hundred and fifty dollars for this shoe. I really would. Uh, one recommendation though, Solomon. Eleven ounces right now for my size. Eleven point three ounces. If you could. Maybe in the next two years, three years, if you could shed like one ounce or one and a half ounces, I think that would be a nice like challenge to shoot for uh, because I don't mind the weight, but I think that would be pretty amazing if you could keep the general uh, lug action and overall protection that you will receive in running in this shoe on the rocky trails while still just reducing the weight just a teeny tiny bit. I think that'd be a cool challenge for you, Solomon. And what type of runner should buy this shoe in 2019? Definitely the runner that wants to get off the beaten path. Like, 
I will be using this shoe up in the 14ers here in Colorado in, in, in the summertime, although it is doing really well in the snow, I will add that. But uh, if you just want to get out into the rocks, into the mud, uh, I would strongly recommend this shoe. And again, you just want to test out to make sure that it's not too narrow for your foot. That's probably going to be the biggest challenge, getting used to a little bit more of a streamlined fit uh, a narrower fit through the midfoot especially. If you can figure that out for your foot, you will be in business. Okay, and remember, the key word is confidence. Confidence, confidence. I was bombing down the mountain today in snowy, snowy, slick conditions. I wasn't afraid at all. That's why I was holding the camera out. Like I, I had no fear of falling because of this shoe. And just like my brother and I were talking about last week, when I, when, when I did the interview with him, I said, uh, or he said, uh, workouts that give you confidence before your peak race is like, it's irreplaceable for your mental state going into a big race. Having confidence in your footwear, going into a training run, going into a race, it makes a difference. It just makes a difference. There's no other way to say it. So confidence is the key word. I had complete confidence in the slush and the mud and the snow today. And that's really fun. Like it's just fun to have confidence when you're going out the door and choosing the right shoe for the, for the trail condition, for the element condition, all of that. And the question of the day for this video, what is your go-to shoe, and this is pretty niche a question, but what is your go-to shoe for really rocky, muddy runs? And listen, I know some of you live in cities and you don't have access to lots of trails, but like if you have the opportunity, for example, I'm interested in Innovate in 2019, guess what else I'm interested in? Scott, that's right, Scott. They make some pretty aggressive trail running shoes. Salming, Salming, a little tiny, I think they're from Sweden. Salming, shout out to Salming. So think outside the box, like what is, what has been the best trail running shoe for really aggressive trails, muddy trails that you have gone to? Comment down below. I think we could all learn a ton from your insight, your experience, your wisdom in that regard. Oh, highly recommend. I love it. And I think we'll be getting to a hundred miles very quickly in the Solomon Speed Cross 5. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing the video. If you know someone that like loves trail running or is interested in getting into trail running, definitely send this video to them. I'd appreciate it. That'd be amazing. Seek beauty in the mud, work hard in the mud and snow, and love each other in the mud and snow. See you tomorrow.